Hello everybody. Uh, today's video is going to be a bit of a follow-up to my previous video about creating your own ebuild scripts. Today I'm actually going to go over the ebuild command, which is a way to run individual functions that can be used in ebuild scripts. If you'll recall in the previous video about creating your own ebuild, I added a function to our ebuild script called source install. ebuild is a command that will actually allow you to run individual functions that are inside ebuild scripts like that. Every ebuild that you create has a default setting for the various functions that you can overwrite within the ebuild itself. And using the ebuild command, you can actually run those functions one by one. It's very useful for debugging an ebuild script while you're writing one. Um, and we're going to go over how to use it today. If you'll notice here, I'm actually in the var db repos custom one at miscellaneous ebuild example directory that I was in during the video about creating your own ebuild. That's because we're going to be running the same ebuild that I used before, the ebuild example 0.2.ebuild. Now, I don't currently have ebuild example, the program that I wrote for the previous video, installed. So I can run ebuild example, and you can see it says no such file directory. That's because it's currently not installed. And today, instead of installing it manually with a merge, we're actually going to go over installing and managing the ebuild on a function-by-function -function basis using the ebuild command. All right, to begin with, let's look at the man page of the ebuild command. You'll notice that the man page says that ebuild is a low-level interface to the portage system. It basically is a way that you can run individual ebuild functions one by one, like I said earlier, and this man page gives you a description of all of the various functions that ebuild can run. You can see the list of functions down here and what they actually do. You can read over this man page if you'd like, but we're going to actually begin with some examples to give you a good idea of how this program works. Now let me quickly go over my ebuild script right here. If you'll recall from the previous video, which hopefully you've watched before this video because we're kind of building on the topics one by one here. This is the script, the ebuild script that we wrote in the previous video. It's exactly the same. I haven't changed it at all. The important thing for this particular video is what is inside the source install function here. Source install is what is known as an ebuild function. It is a specific name that refers to a specific function that ebuild scripts recognize. There is a default sort of template for the source install function, but we've overwritten that template here with our own install instructions right here, which basically just runs make install or has an error message if we fail to do that. That's the only part of the ebuild that's really relevant and important for this particular video. I just wanted to go over that right quick to so make sure that we were all on the same page here. Okay, so you'll recall from the last video that in order to install ebuild example, what I did was I ran emerge at miscellaneous ebuild example, and that went through the emerge process for the ebuild example program just as if it were any other portage program. Anything that's installed in Gentoo's tree or any overlay that you add, it ran through it and installed it just like portage would a normal program. Well, we're going to do that a little bit differently today, and we're going to actually install it with the ebuild command. Now, to begin with, we'll need to run this with root since we're going to be writing to portage directories, but we're going to run the command ebuild. And then the name of the script, which is ebuild example, I'll just tab complete that. And then we want to run a series of ebuild function commands that will actually have the same effect as if we had run emerge ebuild example. Specifically, we want to run ebuild with the manifest, clean, and merge commands. Now, it's very important that we run these particular commands if we want to replicate what exactly emerge ebuild example would do. First of all, what these commands are going to do is manifest is going to update the manifest file for ebuild example, which if you'll recall is a hash file that is located here in this directory and is used to verify the integrity of the ebuild we're trying to run. By running manifest, we will update that file and ensure that it matches what Portage expects from the way this ebuild is put together. The next command here is clean. What that will do is that will clean the temporary build directories that are created for this ebuild that we're running right here. That means that it's not going to leave behind a bunch of compilation artifacts and various files and archives that Portage downloads in the process of actually building and installing the package. And the last command here, merge, is actually a compound command. Merge is actually a shorthand for several different ebuild commands. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at what those commands are. We can run man ebuild again. And we'll scroll down here to see what merge specifically does. As you can see, 
it says that it runs fetch, unpack, compile, install, and QMerge. This is the process that is necessary to run in order to actually download, that's what fetch will do, the archives, unpack the archives to put them in a usable state, compile them, that is run any compilation commands on them that need to be run, install them in the temporary build directory, and then QMerge them, move them from the temporary build directory to the live file system. Since that's a lot of different eBuild commands to run, and a lot of times you only want to just simply install the program to see if it works, you can just use merge as a shorthand to run all of those commands one after the other in the order that they need to be run. Now, it's important to remember that one of the main reasons that you would use eBuild is for debugging purposes. So if you're having problems while developing an eBuild and the merge is failing, it might be a good idea to start running these individual commands one after the other. But that's not too important right now. So let's go ahead and go back here. Now, we're going to run these eBuild commands one after the other right here, and you can see what actually will happen when we run them. It looks very, very similar to actually just emerging the program. In fact, it actually does exactly the same thing. and has almost identical output. And now that we've run that, I can run eBuild example and see if it works. Thanks for watching my YouTube video, which is all eBuild example does. It's just a simple Hello World program. And you can see how this command eBuild has actually done the same thing that a regular emerge would have done, but it's given us granular control. It's given us the ability to have access to every step of the process of emerging this particular eBuild. And that's really what the eBuild command is for. Now, if we want to get rid of a program that we've installed with eBuild, we can run eBuild along with the name of the script. And then the eBuild commands that we want to run are going to be clean and unmerge. Unmerge is another compound command like merge only instead of running those various install commands, what unmerge is going to do is unmerge is going to remove the packages and run the pre-remove and post-remove functions, which is a place where you can, as an eBuild developer, put in specific functionality for things that need to happen before and after the program is removed in case you need that for your program. But we're going to go ahead and run that. And then if we run eBuild example again, you can see that it says no such file directory. That's because we have removed that program from our system. Now there are a lot of eBuild functions and you can get a good idea of all of them by going to the eBuild functions page on the Gentoo wiki. This gives a little bit of a flow chart right here for the process of actually installing a package. This is actually what happens when you run emerge for any given package. All these various eBuild functions are run right here. And most of these functions correspond one to one with a command that you can pass to the eBuild program, such as unpack and compile and install, which we know are part of the merge shorthand. There are also functions that eBuild can do that aren't listed here, such as manifest and clean. You can get a description of what all of these functions will do uh, on the links in this page. And this is a good read. This is something good if you intend to develop eBuilds for Portage. You're really going to have to understand all this stuff. Now, one last thing that I want to do is I want to demonstrate how you can actually make changes to your eBuild script here and have them affect the various eBuild functions that are being run during a merge time. For instance, here in source install, let's go ahead and just add a single line where we echo out a message. Let's say this is a change, right? And let's just write that and exit. Now, source install, like all eBuild functions, is basically just a shell script that will be run as part of the emerge process. Every specific eBuild function has a different point in the emerge process when it's going to be run, and it has a different default script that is built into each function. And we overwrite those eBuild functions when we add them to our eBuild scripts and put our own shell scripts inside of them. Now we've made that change, so let's go ahead and run eBuild again on eBuildExamples.eBuild, and we'll want to run it with manifest since we changed the eBuild script, and so the manifest is going to have to be updated. And then we'll run it with clean and merge. All right, we're going to go ahead and do this again. And as you can see here, as part of the output, the little echo command that we did, this is a change, ran. And you can see that it ran here when install at miscellaneous evil example dot zero two was called. In fact, all this output here that you see in part of a normal emerge command is going to be telling you when specific eBuild functions are running. For instance, creating manifest, that would have been printed when the manifest step was reached. Unpacking sources. Preparing sources, all of those are steps, they're functions that are part of eBuilds, and they have output that appears as part of an emerge command. This is all very useful for the main use case of the eBuild command, which is debugging eBuild scripts that you're writing.
All right, thank you everybody for watching this video. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Um, anybody who's going to be writing e-builds for Gen 2 really needs to understand the e-build command quite well because it's uh, invaluable as a development aid for e-build scripts. It gives you such fine control, uh, allowing you to debug individual e-build functions that you've added to your e-build script so that you can quickly and easily find the problems that you're having. Now the man page on the e-build command and the Gentoo Wiki's resources on the e-build command are quite good and you can learn a lot more about it from this point that I've left off here in this video. Um, I'm actually probably going to talk more about actually writing e-build scripts from this point on, hopefully with the video about creating your own custom repository and this video about using the e-build command. This will give anybody who wants to write e-builds for Gentoo a good base to follow some slightly more advanced tutorials about actually writing e-build scripts. But uh, thank you all for watching and stay tuned for my next video. We'll see you then. Goodbye.